Looking at horsepower in the 1970s is kind of a trap for two reasons. First is that the decade started with the peak of muscle car performance. The Boss, the Hemi, the LS6, awe-inspiring torque monster versions of engines that quickly disappeared from the picture, with virtually all of them being gone by 1972, hardly painting a picture of a decade. Second, not only were these engines rated in gross, but the market would transition to net at about the same time in 1972. And net is not simply a percentage of gross. Net ratings can vary on an otherwise identical engine depending on how many belts are running how many accessories using what sizes of pulleys, as well as other factors. Ultimately, it depends on how much power is being robbed from the engine for other uses. What this means is that horsepower ratings from 1971 and earlier are not directly comparable to horsepower ratings from 1972 and later. But let's see what we can. The 454 was Chevrolet's performance engine starting in 1970, and a non-LS6 1970 Chevelle 454 Supersport was rated at 360 to 370 horsepower gross, or 280 to 285 horsepower net. In 1973, the last year of the 454 Supersport, the net rating was down to 245 horsepower net, in a car that weighed more, a combination that increased the 0 to 60 from 6 to 7 seconds and the quarter mile from 14 and a half to 15 and a half. Meanwhile, the more popular 350 Chevelle in 1970 was rated at 250 to 300 horsepower gross or 170 to 190 horsepower net with the quickest version doing 0 to 60 in 7 and a half seconds and the quarter mile in the mid 15s. By the 1973 restyle, the 350 was down to 145 to 175 horsepower net and still heavier and therefore slowing the car down by almost two seconds. In the last of the big Chevelle Malibus of 1977, there was only the 170 horsepower version with no real change in performance. In the downsized Malibus of 1978, the top engine was a 305 with only 135 to 145 horsepower, but the much lighter car was actually a few tenths quicker than the previous 350 car. At Ford, both the 375 gross horsepower Boss 429 and the 290 gross horsepower Boss 302 disappeared after their second year in 1970 to be replaced by the one year only 330 gross horsepower Boss 351. A 429 Cobra Jet had a gross rating of 370 horsepower, and in a Torino was good for 0 to 60 in the low 6 second range and the quarter mile in the mid 14 second range, while a much heavier Grand Torino, equipped with a standard 429, rated at 320 horsepower gross, or 210 horsepower net, was good for a 8 second 0 to 60 and 16 seconds in the quarter mile. In 1974, the 429 was replaced by the 460 with 220 horsepower net. And not surprisingly, performance remained pretty much the same. A 1970 Torino with a 351 Windsor was rated at 300 horsepower gross, or about 190 horsepower net, giving it a 0 to 60 of about 7 seconds, and the quarter mile in about 15 and a half. And the heavier Grand Torino with the same engine, increase those times to about 9 seconds and 17 seconds. By the end of the decade, the car was restyled as the even heavier LTD2, and power had dropped to the 150 to 160 horsepower range, increasing 0 to 60 to over 12 seconds, and the quarter mile to over 19. The 5 liter Mustang of 1970 was rated at 220 horsepower gross, or 150 horsepower net, and could do 0 to 60 in the mid 7 second range and the quarter mile in 16. Naturally, the heavier Mustang of 1971 was a few tenths slower, and by the end of its run in 1973, horsepower of the 302 was down to around 135, where it pretty much remained through the Mustang 2 and into the early 80s.
The Hemi Cuda, rated at 425 horsepower and 490 pound-feet of torque gross, or 350 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque net, was capable of 0 to 60 in under 6 seconds, and the quarter mile in about 14, presuming you could get it to hook up. Stock versions with upgraded tires have reportedly broken to the high 12s, but this is a car that only existed for 70 and 71. The 1970 barrel was rated at 375 horsepower gross or 305 horsepower net and could move the slightly heavier charger to 0 to 60 in just over 6 seconds and the quarter mile in the mid 14s and the 1971 Restyle was maybe a tenth slower. By comparison, the 1971 Charger with the 383 had 300 horsepower gross and 250 horsepower net, and did 0 to 60 in the mid 7 second range, and the quarter mile in the high 15s. In 1972, the 383 was replaced by a 400, increasing horsepower by 5, and torque by 10. The car got even heavier in 1975, and the top engine was now a 230 horsepower high output version of the 400, while lesser versions of the 400 produced 190 horsepower and 290 pound-feet of torque, a power-to-weight combination that raised the quarter mile to over 18 seconds. In 1977, the Charger became the Magnum, with little more than a front-end restyle, and the 190 horsepower 400 was now the top engine choice, but torque was up slightly to 305. No 440 option had been available for some time, but the 440 in bigger cars had 5 more horsepower and 20 more pound-feet of torque. The 318 was the most popular Plymouth engine. In 1970, it was rated at 230 horsepower gross, or 155 horsepower net, moving the mid-sized satellite to 60 in about 8.5 seconds, and the quarter mile in the mid-16s. The heavier redesign of 1971 increased those times by almost a second. Horsepower for the engine, however, remained pretty much unchanged, only varying slightly by application, ranging from 145 to 155 horsepower, as it carried into the 1980s. However, the cars did tend to get slower as the decade progressed, usually due to increased weight from added features and changes in gearing intended to improve mileage. AMC was typically considered slow to respond to changes. The Javelin's 390 of 1970 was rated at 325 horsepower gross, or 250 horsepower net, and was capable of moving the car to 60 in the mid-six-second range and the quarter mile in about 14 and a half. In 1971, both car and engine got bigger, now 401 cubic inches and 330 horsepower gross or 255 horsepower net and performance remained unchanged. The only significant change during its run up to 1974 was the addition of catalytic converters reducing output to 235 horsepower, still with an insignificant impact on performance. Some performance markets, however, continued through the decade, particularly those closer to the budget end of the spectrum. The 340 Duster of 1970 had 275 gross horsepower, or 235 horsepower net, and was capable of 0 to 60 in 7 seconds and the quarter mile in 15. The 340 continued through 1973, gaining 5 horsepower in that time, only to be replaced in 1974 with the 245 net horsepower 360. 1976 was the last year of the duster, and the 360 was down to 220 horsepower by that point. Its replacement, the Volare Roadrunner, continued the 360, but output dropped to 175 horsepower to start with, climbing back up to 195 horsepower by the end of the decade, moving the heavier car to 60 in 9 seconds and the quarter mile in just under 17. But when it comes to performance in the 70s, the go-to car is the Firebird 400, later referred to as the 6.6 liter. A 1970 400 
was rated at 330 to 345 horsepower gross, or 265 to 275 horsepower net, good for a low 6 second 0 to 60 and mid 14 second quarter mile in a Formula 400. For 1971, it was down to 300 horsepower gross, or 250 horsepower net, slowing the car down almost half a second. For 1973, horsepower dropped further to 230 net, and the car would get heavier in 1974, adding another second to those times. For 1978, California cars would instead get an Oldsmobile 403, which would be sold elsewhere in 1979, and would finish the decade with 185 horsepower, and a 10 second 0 to 60, and nearly 18 seconds in the quarter mile. However, there was a limited number of W72 400s produced, with a rating of 220 horsepower net. But considering the car was tested with a 0 to 60 of under 7 seconds and a quarter mile under 15, it seems likely that version of the engine was underrated. The big bad Trans Am, however, was the 455 Super Duty from 1971 to 1974. Introduced with a gross output of 335 horsepower, its net rating ranged from 290 to 310, pushing the car to 60 in under 6 seconds and the quarter mile in close to 14. The standard by which performance was compared in the 1970s would be, of course, the Corvette. In 1970, a 350 Corvette was the base model and, like other Chevys, was rated at 300 horsepower gross or 190 horsepower net, moving the fantastic plastic to 60 in 7 seconds and the quarter mile in 15. But the new LT1 350 was rated at 370 horsepower gross in the Corvette and 360 horsepower gross in the Camaro. The top engine, however, was a version of the LS6 454, rated at 460 horsepower gross or 350 horsepower net providing a much more impressive 4.5 second 0 to 60 and low 13s in the quarter mile. 1971 saw the LT1 down to 330 horsepower gross or 275 horsepower net, still knocking more than half a second off the base 350 Corvette's times, while the top LS6 was down to 425 horsepower gross or 325 horsepower net, running in the mid 5 second range to 60 and just under 14 seconds in the quarter mile. The 1972 LT1 was down to 255 horsepower net for just under 7 seconds to 60 and just over 15 in the quarter mile. And although the LS6 was gone, there was still a 270 horsepower 454 that was almost half a second quicker than the LT1. The LT1 would be dropped in 1973 and the base 454 would only carry on through 1974, leaving a base 350 with 205 horsepower as the top engine for 1975, providing a 0 to 60 of just under 9 seconds and the quarter mile in the mid 16s. But 1978 would see the L82 350, bringing horsepower back up to 220 and 0 to 60 to 8 seconds and the quarter mile in 16. As we've seen, Performance engine packages of all sizes were mostly killed off early in the decade, but if we're going to try to pick the leaders based on net figures, both official and estimated, it would look something like this. The AMC 401, rated at 235 to 255 horsepower. Ford's Cleveland-based 351 Boss, estimated at around 260 to 270 horsepower net. Chevrolet's LT1 350, with 255 to 275 horsepower net. Pontiac's Ram Air 400 with 265 to 275 horsepower net. The Ford 429 Cobra Jet with roughly 270 to 280 horsepower net. The Buick 455 Stage 1 rated at 275 to 280 horsepower net. The Ford 429 Boss with approximately 290 horsepower net. Pontiac 455 Super Duty with 290 to 310 horsepower. The Oldsmobile 455 W30 with 300 to 310 horsepower net. The Chrysler 446 Pack 
With 330 to 335 horsepower net, the Chevrolet LS6 454 with 325 to 350 horsepower net, and of course Chrysler's 426 Hemi with 350 horsepower net. The truth is, most of these performance engines only lasted a few years and saw relatively small production numbers, and many of them only existed in the 1970s. Well, the more mundane big displacement engines slowly transitioned from cars to trucks, as did tow packages and the buyers that needed them. And while mainstream engines that carried through the decades saw horsepower fluctuate both up and down, changes in performance were more greatly impacted by increases in weight, which typically amounted to around 400 pounds before end of decade downsizing. But horsepower for cars in the 80s would transition to smaller turbo engines in even smaller cars. Thank <laughs> you.